What up, cucks? It's your boy, the Hater, up in this mug. And it's time for another video and another edition of Hater Outdoors. Let's get to it. This is going to be a SmackDown review. Now, here's the thing about SmackDown and WWE in general, right? It has to be said and the point has to be made. And that is that the overall booking, right? The overall storytelling of WWE and in this particular case, SmackDown, is just all over the map, right? There is no consistency at all. People are excited because Bailey and Nia Jax made a reference to like some something that apparently happened in 2017 that nobody remembers about. But what about the things that happened a few months ago? Let's get to it, you know? First up, I'm gonna go out of order here. There's a stupid segment between Cucky Rhodes and A-Town Down. This segment was really dumb for a number of reasons. Number one, uh, A-Town Down just sucks, right? Number two, Cody Rhodes just sucks. Number three, the premise of this interaction is that Austin Theory is upset. Austin Theory, the guy who beat John Cena at WrestleMania, is upset that Jacob Fatu, a jobber, like, hurt him, right? Like, in reality, if wrestling were real, like, Austin Theory would beat the shit out of Jacob Fatu. He's probably, like, five times stronger, way more athletic, he's better looking, like, he's better than Jacob Fatu in any capacity, right? So the fact that Austin Theory hasn't gotten any kind of push, and his pushes have been essentially demoralized by him, like, being the first person in the history of the world to cash in the money in the bank for the U.S. title, it's like, like, that's the biggest burial of all time, you know? But anyways, at least he still looks great, right? He's got, like, muscles and everything. And look at Jacob Fatu, he's just like a normal dude, you know? But whatever, it is what it is. They've decided that Jacob Fatu is more scary. Fine, right? Brings up a lot of stupid questions, but let's move on, right? Then Terrence Crawford, the boxer, just happens to be at ringside and gives Cody a chair after Cody takes a thorough ass whipping. Cody uses the chair in a horrible beatdown, right? The, 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 the worst part of it was he throws the chair to, I think, Grayson Waller or maybe Austin Theory, I don't know which one, and the guy catches the chair. Then, he, then the person that caught the chair holds the chair there like a retard so Cody Rhodes can do a disaster kick. Like, this is just stupid at this point, right? It's like, who would just stay there like a moron, right? Holding the chair by their face so Cody can springboard off the ropes and do the disaster kick slowly, which is what happened, right? Another thing is this. I understand that the point here was to just show Terrence Crawford, but most people don't know who the hell that is because Terrence Crawford, even though he's a great boxer, he's not like a mainstream star in any capacity. Like, I like boxing a lot, but I wouldn't recognize him if I saw him. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Another thing that I didn't like about this segment specifically is that for better or worse, and we have to be honest here, the reality is that there's no reason why A-Town Down should be able to beat the WWE Champion 2 on 1. This would be like, remember, remember the Highlanders, the tag team, the Highlanders? Imagine if the Highlanders like showed up and just beat Randy Orton 2 on 1. No, what would happen is the Highlanders would come in to beat up Randy Orton 2 on 1, Randy Orton would kick one in the balls, DDT him, throw the other guy around the ropes, DDT him, RKO them both, and just leave. That's what would happen, right? They would never get the, the, the upper hand on the world champion. It's the world champion. Imagine, like, the Hardy Boys, right? The Hardy Boys, like, attacking The Rock 2-on-1, right? The Rock would just lay it, the smack it down on both of them simultaneously, right? There is a hierarchy, and the hierarchy matters, right? It's very, very rare when you have a tag team being able to outperform one guy. Right? Maybe in a match, but not in a beatdown situation. Anyways, that was the segment they gave us, so that's the segment I'm talking about. Next up, we had a decent match. It was decent because a lot of cool things happened, but it was not great because there was a lot of botches between Andrade and Carmelo Hayes. And once again, I hate to say it again, cucks, but I was right all along. Remember when all of you said, oh, Carmelo Hayes is going to be a main eventer? And I said, no, he isn't. Well, here we are. Carmelo Hayes can't even beat Andrade, who will never be anything of value, right? This is, there's two things wrong with this. Number one, obviously, even though I think Carmelo Hayes is going to be a jobber, I can at least concede that he's better than Andrade, right? Carmelo Hayes is a good-looking guy and with crisp athleticism in the sense that, like, he makes things look easy, right? He's athletic. He's actually athletic. Now, he's like 5'5", five, five, but you can't hold that against him, right? Andrade just looked like twice his size, and Andrade is essentially a glorified cruiserweight, you know what I mean? So Carmelo Hayes is just not big enough to ever be a star, but he has the other attributes. Now, another thing that sucked about this is that Carmelo Hayes, I know he's not the former NXT champion, but he may as well be, right? Because he is like the last relevant NXT champion, right? Trick Williams had a horrible NXT title run, 
and Ilya Dragunov is just a filler champion. So the last NXT champion, the last real NXT star, is Carmelo Hayes. But that sh goes to show how unimportant NXT is, because while Carmelo Hayes can be the NXT champion, on SmackDown, he is a lower card wrestler, right? Uh, I think it's Corey Graves, or one of the announcers, kept saying that these guys are both like under the main event. No, they're not. These are undercard jobbers, right? Andrade and Carmelo Hayes are not gonna be on a pay-per-view. And if they are, they're only gonna find their way in a pay-per-view if they're in part of like a multi-man match, meaning at least six people or greater, right? You can put them both in a ladder match, you can put them both in a Survivor Series team, right? But they are not mid-carders. They are not even mid-carders, right? They are undercard wrestlers. They are on the level of like Santino Morella. I mean, obviously Santino is better than them both, but they're on that level, right? Like they're never going to be on pay-per-view as a serious threat. No one's ever going to, like no one ever thought, right, during the Money in the Bank that, Car that uh, Carlito, if, if, you, if you put Carlito in there, that he would win. Nobody thought that Andrade could win. Nobody thought that Carmelo could win, right? They're like on the level of Carlito and JD McDonough. That's where they are. They're undercard jobbers, right? Um, then we had uh, Bianca Belair versus Chelsea Green. This was even worse. And it was even worse because Bianca Belair was like the number one pick. Right, she was like SmackDown's number one pick, uh, and Jade Cargill was like another high pick, right? And they're just complete, completely irrelevant. They're complete jobbers. They're not featured prominently, prominently, right? Bianca Belair last year had one of the worst years of her career, and this year is shaping up to be even worse. This is a complete waste of time. They're not even like, they're sure as shit, not in the main event. But Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill aren't even the tag team champions anymore, right? Speaking of the tag team champions, they make an appearance via like, you know, video, and they start taunting Bianca Belair and uh, Jade Cargill. Now, I have a problem with this. And the problem is that the tag team champions now no longer have their, like, witch gimmick. They're just, like, basically the beautiful people, except, I hate to say it, they're not very attractive. They're not pigs, but they're not attractive women. Like, they can't pull off this, like, popular girl gimmick, right? Because yesterday they, they were witches, number one. Number two, they act like they're the fucking, like, they're fucking Edge and Christian or the Hardy Boys, right? They're this like throwaway tag team that nobody cares about and they're taunting Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill who are obviously bigger stars and they're like, yeah, we'll give you a taste of your tag team titles. Like they act like they've been tag team champions for 10 years. Like Bianca Belair was a tag team champion right before them. Like they've been champions for like a month. You know what I mean? But they're talking as if they're a big deal. Like and it's not working because nobody cares about the tag team titles. Then we have one of the, well, let's get, let's get over this other stupid ass thing first. We have Michin versus Tiffany Stratton. Michin wins after a distraction. Nobody cares at all. Michin sucks. Tiffany Stratton is overrated, uh, and Bailey sucks ass. Bailey has, you know, it's hard. It's hard to, to like determine which like wrestler has had the worst post WrestleMania career. Um, you know, logic would dictate that it's Cody Rhodes, but it, it's not, right? You might think it's Damian Priest. It's not. It's either Bailey or Trick Williams. Like they're. Their runs have been atrocious. Like, nobody cares at all that Trick Williams lost the title. Nobody, I forgot that Bailey's the champion. I don't care at all. I could give a shit who the champion is. So, Michin beats, beats Tiffany Stratton. Now, let's move on to a good segment. Logan Paul versus LA Knight. Uh, not in a, in a match, obviously, but in a contract signing, right? Uh, it was stupid. Contract signings generally are dumb. But I will say this. Uh, they made fun of each other, and everything that Logan Paul said was 100% true. And this wasn't like... You know, your MJF promo where he's saying things that nobody's allowed to say. He pretty much buried LA Knight. Now, I like LA Knight, but everything Logan Paul said was true. LA Knight's career has been an abject failure, right? He's achieved absolutely nothing in professional wrestling, right? And, like, I understand it's a fake sport, obviously, but Logan Paul has already achieved more, way more, than LA Knight has achieved. And likely, Logan Paul is going to achieve way more in his career than, than LA Knight will, right? And, and it's clear why. It's clear why. LA Knight is one of the better guys, but Logan Paul is better than him. And that's the reality, and that's what Logan Paul was presenting. Basically, it's like, if you look at the two of them, like, first of all, there's absolutely no doubt that Logan Paul would beat his ass within 10 seconds, right? Because Logan Paul is a real fighter. And this is, this is the thing that bothers me. Nobody wants to give these guys any credit, like the, the Paul brothers. The reality is, they're real ones, motherfuckers. Jake Paul is a legit boxer. If you know anything about boxing, you know that Jake, Jake Paul can throw hands. He can throw hands. That's why he's dropping these MMA guys left and right, ending their careers. You know, Logan Paul isn't as good, but he's still good. He's better than a WWE, like, pretend tough guy, right? And that's essentially what Logan Paul said. He said, you're a gym bro with a tan who's pretending to be The Rock. That is a, a 
in my opinion, a catastrophic burial, because that's exactly what LA Knight is. He's not a real athlete. He's not as charismatic as The Rock. I like him, but he's not, right? And then LA Knight just says like, oh, your brother has more balls than you. Yeah, but that's not really saying much because his brother has more balls than everyone in WWE combined. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> do, do you think, do you think that like Carmelo Hayes or Andrade would sign up to go fight Mike Tyson? Mike Tyson would, would end their lives, you know? But Mike Tyson's gonna take that, that customary Jake Paul beating when, when the time comes, right? Put your bets in now, cucks. But anyways, uh, the segment otherwise was pretty decent. Logan Paul's good on the mic. Um, uh, LA Knight is good on the mic, so I'm looking forward to their match slightly. But I don't really care because it's for the US title. You know, I kind of hope that whoever loses moves on to the main event because both of these guys are better off in the main event than in the US title. Then we had our, our main event, Cucky and Cucky Owens versus uh, A-Town Down Under, right? Match is dumb. Cucky and Cucky win, and then they get attacked by the bloodline, right? Um, so, so far, nothing at all. Like, who gives a shit? Let's get this over with, and let's get to the point where Roman Reigns returns, because I personally am fed up with this, right? The, the, the stories under Triple H's booking, right? And, I'm, and I can't say this is all Triple H, because they weren't much better off when Vince was in charge. But the stories just take forever to resolve, right? Like, we have Liv Morgan falling into Dominic's arms, or vice versa, like six weeks in a row. In those same six weeks, we see Eric Rowan and Bo Dallas crying six weeks in a row, right? And then on SmackDown, we see the same thing happening six weeks in a row. At this point, it's becoming comically silly, right? Where Cucky Rhodes can do absolutely nothing. Like, he comes off looking like the biggest dork of all time. Like, every time he goes out, the bloodline beats his ass. Every time! It's like, I understand that the, that the face has to get his ass beat so that when he inevitably destroys Solo Sokoa at SummerSlam, he comes out on top and the fans can cheer. But once in a while, it's okay for the face to get in a, to get in a punch, right? This is becoming ridiculous. You know, like, it's like every week, basically, Solo Sokoa and Jacob Fatu have their way with Cody Rhodes and friends. They just beat them every week. And it, 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 there comes a point where it's like, what's the point of this, right? All right, you've beaten them several times. Why do you keep beating him every week? Like, are you, are you trying to teach a lesson? Because if you are, then why are you doing it every week? Just beat them very badly once, and that's it. But the booking makes absolutely no sense, and Cody Rhodes, in my opinion, his title run is failing as a result of this, because at the end of the day, he hasn't had one competitor, one guy that can be a believable person that can take his belt, right? Like, if we had, like, Cody Rhodes versus Randy Orton right away, that would be something where it's like, oh shit, like, Randy Orton might be Cody Rhodes. Probably not, but he might. But because there's nobody there that's like any kind of main event, you have to like elevate people like Sol Sokoa. So that's where we stand. It's not a good look, and it's not a good episode of SmackDown, cuckolds.